From the book of Ma from the book of Job, brother, I'm going to read today. Amen. From the book of Job, chapter number 19. Hallelujah. Job 19 and verse number 21. Have pity upon me, have pity upon me, O ye my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Have pity upon me, O ye my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost, and I thank you for the anointing that rests upon your word. I pray, O oh God, that you would touch every life that is in this place. Help us to draw closer to you than we've ever been before. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the word of God. Hallelujah. In the setting of the scripture, you, you all know the story of Job. Job, by this point, has been in the middle of his greatest trial, or perhaps the greatest trial that any man has ever faced in their life. Job, uh, even among the world today, if you mention to anybody that has any knowledge at all of anything about the Bible, you will find that if they're going through something that would be classified as a trial, they would say, I'm having a Job experience. And, uh, and if you really want to talk about how bad that you're doing, you know, you're going to compare yourself to that fellow Job. You know, he's in there and, in, uh, and you'll refer to him but I don't think anybody amen other than the Lord ever faced a trial as as heavy as what Job did I, I think that his was probably the greatest trial that's why there's so many chapters dealing with amen how to handle a trial it all started in the beginning of Job whenever he uh whenever the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? And, uh, and the devil, amen, the Bible said that he began to, uh, he began because of the Lord's permission, began to afflict Job. In one brief moment of time, he lost his wealth and he lost his family. Everything that, uh, that could be attained and say, this is where my success is, it was all gone from him. In a one brief moment of time, he went from being, I guess they call it the man of the world today. You know, one man, we think that he's the greatest man. Job went from that position to being the one that no one thought anything good about. In one brief moment of time. And then not only did he lose his wealth, but the Bible said he lost his health. And in the midst of it, he made this statement, have pity upon me, my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. He looked at his situation and he said, from where I stand, it looks like you should have pity upon me because God's hand has touched me. But I would like for us to know today, sometimes it's not time for pity. But when we really realize that the hand of God has touched us, no matter how great the trial you serve a God that when his hand touches you, oh hallelujah, it's not a time for pity because God's hand doesn't stop touching until it starts blessing. 
Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. From the book of Psalms, I'd like to read to you today, Psalms 143 and verse number 5. The psalmist made this statement, I remember the days of old and I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. In other words, I think about the things that you've done and I see the work of your hands. When Isaiah made mention of it in Isaiah 48 and verse number 12, God said through, the, through Isaiah, he said, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. Mine hand hath also laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heaven. When I call unto them, they stood up together. In other words, with the hand of God, this heaven and the earth that we stand upon, it was made by the hand of God. And so David, whenever he's looking at it, David is saying, when I look at the expanse of the heavens that your hand created, when I see the things that you have done and begin to think of all of the things, amen, that you have done just with the working of your hand, amen. There's something awesome to think that this God of glory, amen, would, would touch the earth and just with one touch from the hand of God, the earth would come into existence. With just a wave of the hand of God, the expanse of the heavens and all of the stars, amen, that would come into existence just with a wave of his hand. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and as I think about, amen, the hand of God and how that the hand of God, just one touch from the hand of God, amen, not just keeping it at it, Amen. This old world began to spin. Amen. And the, and the moon began to spin about, amen, uh, about the earth. And just one touch and the, and the sun became, uh, amen, that place in the, in the center of what we call the universe. And, and the earth began to spin, uh, amen, around the sun. And, and everything was in the right place. And, and, uh, and we weren't too close to the sun that everything everything would burn up or we weren't too far away from the sun that everything would be frozen and it would be a man a vast a man nothingness that would be there but by the hand of God oh hallelujah when God set this world into motion the four seasons, amen, that come upon, amen, upon the world all started with the hand of God. What an awesome hand that he has. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. At just the hand of God, armies are stopped. At the hand of God, healing virtue comes to those that are sick. At the hand of God, amen, a stretched out hand, amen. At the hand of God, the seas are calmed at the hand of God. God. Amen. Great things can be accomplished. Oh God, I'm so thankful for the hand of God. Amen. That from time to time seems to touch the individual. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So in creation, the Bible said, amen, that he, he caused his hand to touch. And when his hand, amen, when his hand created, it was there and, and really didn't need the hand of God upon it. Once it started, it was just there. Uh, I know that Brother Krupp was involved in the building. I assume that he probably built this platform. I'm, I'm guessing that you probably put everything together. I hadn't seen him crawling underneath here every week and making sure that everything stayed together. <laughs> because whenever he did it the first time, he did it right. And he doesn't have to come back up here and do it again. And the reason that I can be confident, as a matter of fact, I can jump up and down on this thing and, and I can put quite a bit of weight on this thing. I don't know exactly how much. I don't think I trust a car to it, but I could put quite a bit of weight on this, on this platform because I know that that man knew what he was doing when it came to building. 
And I know that I can put confidence and we can put an organ there and we can put a baptistry in the back and we don't have to worry about it being full of water and that thing crashing through and, and something happened because whenever they built this thing, they built it right. Amen. Can I tell you, if, the, if man can know how to build some things right, you serve a God, amen, that isn't a something God, but he is an awesome God and everything he touches is going to be right. <laughs> well, hallelujah. So I read from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 and verse number 11. And the Bible said in, in Ecclesiastes, he said, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. In other words, amen, sometimes when God's hand touches it may not be that it looks all that good to begin with. But whenever God finishes the touch, he makes everything beautiful in his time. He said also he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning unto the end. He said if you think that God has finished working, you haven't been around the block much because he makes everything beautiful in his time. And if you hadn't seen it get beautiful yet, just hang on because God isn't finished working with that and God's going to make it a beautiful thing. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And it's awesome to think that he can take and make beauty out of ashes. He can take joy and make joy out of mourning. He can take sorrow and he can put happiness in that place. Oh, hallelujah. He can take sickness and he can make health. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. He can take death and bring life. Amen. Because I serve a God that in his time and in his way, he makes everything better beautiful in his time oh praise the lord now i'm going to take you back to the book of genesis chapter number two amen in genesis chapter number two and verse number seven amen the bible said and the lord god amen formed man out of the dust of the ground he formed man of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Amen. I, I somehow have this conviction that when God made man, amen, he could have spoken and man come into existence. But from what I am reading, God reached down into the dust. Amen. And, uh, and he reached in to it with his hands and he took dust particles and he formed man the Bible said amen he shaped him into the likeness that he was it was not just a oh look what happened the clay just came into being but I believe that the hand of God said the eyes will be here the nose will be here the mouth will be here the hands and arms and he'll stand up right he knew exactly the way that he made us the Bible said we were formed another place he said we were framed amen it was the way that God made us amen and when God does something he doesn't do a halfway job on it he makes us amen in a beautiful expression and he makes us in a in his own image and after his own likeness amen and he says amen to his creation to the one that he formed amen I've worked upon this and I've made it beautiful and the Bible said when he had made man amen that he looked and he said and it was very good amen I, I'd like to take us to the book of Isaiah chapter number 64 and there's and there is a uh, and there is a, a, a just a little bit of a change in this in this passage as we as we continue. But but in Isaiah sixty four and verse number eight, Amen. It brings us to Amen uh, to the knowledge that uh, that not only was Adam formed, but evidently uh, there, the hand of God must have been upon us when we were formed. Amen. The reason my nose is the shape that it's in is because God made it that way. 
reason my hands are the size that, they're, that they are is because God made it that way. The reason I wear a, a, a triple E size shoe is because God made my feet that way. And, uh, and uh, you know, I can say that, you know, my feet are fat all I want to, and that's really true, but it's God that made them that way. He formed me. And the Bible, the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number 8, But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art potter. We all are the work of thy hand. In other words, he said, if you really want to see the hand of God, start looking at the way that God formed us. And we're nothing but clay in the hand of God. And God has formed us. And God has, has made us. We're just the work of God's hand. That's all that we are, just the work of God's hand. As the, as the infant begins to grow, amen. Some people say we do a lot of molding. And truly, we do some of it. But God's the one that forms everything. Amen. It's really God that does all of the working. Uh, I, I looked today at Sister Gates and I think about Nathaniel, a man who, who should not even be living today if it wasn't for the hand of God, who should not be seeing today if it wasn't for the hand of God, should not be walking if it wasn't for the hand of God, a man should not have been able to graduate from high school if it wasn't for the hand of God. But God put his hand upon him and the reason that he is alive today is because the hand of God, a man touched him and he was able to see. He was blind and God healed him of blindness. Amen. His, uh, his mind that didn't seem to be formed all that well, God took care of that. Amen. And, and, uh, and an intelligent uh, boy. Amen. And, and I would have to say an intelligent young man today. Although he's not in the church, amen, he, he had the hand of God upon him and God touched him in a phenomenal way, amen. So the Bible said, thou art the potter and we all are the work of thy hand. We're the work of the hand of God. So I read from the book of Ezra chapter number 7 and verse number 28. Amen. So it, it, in Isaiah, it gives us the indication that perhaps, amen, when God does a work, he touches us, and then, and then it's almost as if I touched it and now I can take my hand off. But when I read in Ezra, amen, and also in the book of Nehemiah, Ezra chapter number 7 and verse number 28, amen, the, uh, Ezra gives us this indication. He said, and hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes and I was strengthened by the hand of the Lord my God amen and I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me he said I was standing in my captivity and I did not know where to turn and uh, he said but the hand of God amen began to touch me and though I had been weak the hand of God began to touch and as it touched me I became strengthened by the hand of God I want you to know today that when the hand of God begins to touch it brings a strength amen to the individual they that wait upon the Lord Isaiah said they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint. You know what happened? Amen. The person said if I can just have a touch from the hand of God everything's going to be alright. I know that God is going to make everything well in his time. So Ezra said the hand of my God, amen was upon me and it caused me to be strengthened. Nehemiah amen went uh, uh, he testified to folks and he said in Nehemiah chapter number 2 and verse number 18 then I told them of the hand of my God which was good upon me he said I, I begin to talk 
talk about, amen, how that while I was back in, the, in bondage, while I was, amen, while I really didn't have anything going for me, the hand of God was good upon me. And the reason that I'm in Jerusalem today, amen, Nehemiah was saying, it isn't because I'm smart enough to be here, but the reason that I'm here is because the hand of God has been good to me today. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Can I tell you, each one of us, the reason that we're here is because the hand of God, hallelujah, has been good to us. Amen. God has been good to every one of us here today. Let's worship the Lord for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Amen. So I read from Isaiah chapter number 43 and and when I read in 43 of Isaiah in verse number 1, amen, or verse number 10 rather, excuse me, Isaiah 43 and verse number 10, the Lord said, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he, before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. He said, if you're looking for somebody that formed me, it didn't happen. I'm God and God alone. He said, now you can say that you were formed, but I can't say I was formed. He said, you can say that you were made, but I wasn't made. I'm God. <laughs> and then in verse number in verse number 11, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. He says, there's nobody else. I'm, I'm the only one. I have declared and have saved and I have showed. And when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Verse number 13 says, Yea, before the, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. He gives us an indication that it's not just as if God, a man, touched something and made it and then he took his hand off of it. But when it came to man, a man, God said, I touched it. And nothing can take it out of my hand. There's nothing that can, a man can take this out of my hand. Whenever I, whenever I begin the touch upon the individual, nothing is going to be able, hallelujah, to take you out of the hand of God. Amen. God said, you just understand one thing. I'm God. Nobody formed me. Nothing is more powerful than me. Amen. Before the day was, I'm that great. I am eternal. I am all powerful. And if you want to know something, nothing can take you out of my hand. I have a confidence today that if I'm living for God, hallelujah today, I can live for him tomorrow, I can live for him the next day because nothing can come in and take me out of the hand of my God. Oh hallelujah. Amen. So he said I am the Lord and there's none that can deliver you out of my hand. He said I will work. I will work and who shall let it? He said whenever I begin to work upon, upon an individual Who's going to be stopping it? You sure aren't going to stop it. And I'm sure not going to stop it. Whenever God begins to work, it, it, just, it just takes shape. And he just continues. And there's an old song that says, I think it was a kid's song, it says, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the star, the sun and the moon, Jupiter and Mars. How loving and faithful he must be because he's still working on, because he's still working on me. It took him just a week to make all of creation, but he's still working on me. 
It took him a week to make everything that he did. But he's still working on me. It took him a week to make all that. And I came to the Lord and repented when I was six years old. But he's still working on me. And I was baptized, amen, about, about that same time in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And, uh, and he put his hand upon me, amen, at six years old, but he's still working on me. And he filled me with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, amen. And, I, and I've walked with him, but he's still working on me. Oh, hallelujah. God didn't just say, I touched you, you got the Holy Ghost, now I'll go on to somebody else and I'll put my hand on them for a minute and then I'll go to somebody else and I'll put my hand on them. No, he said, he said, I will work and who will let it? I'm going to work and I'm going to continue to work. I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on touching. I'm going to keep on working until, until everything is complete. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take you one more verse of scripture and I, and then we'll go back to our text. And the word in Jeremiah chapter number 18 and verse number, one, verse number one, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of God came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. I thought about it, but I'm not a potter, so I wouldn't be able to do what I'd like to do. But as I, as I thought this morning, I thought, amen, looking at this scripture, I thought, Amen. If I, if I was a potter and I had a wheel and I had some clay, amen, here, I would try to make a vessel and I would try to make it, amen, after the shape and after the image that I would want to make, a vase, a bowl, whatever I could make, and I would shape it. And then, and then just to give the illustration, Amen. Not because it's the way that God did, but it's the way, amen, it's the way that, that I can see it. I would intentionally make a mar within the clay. Amen. Just so that I could show you what God could do with a piece of marred clay. Amen. I, I want you to know, amen, to begin with that it was not the potter that marred the clay. It was in, amen, the clay's character that the, amen, that that vessel was marred. It was not the potter that marred the clay at all. The potter knew exactly what he wanted to do when he began to work with that clay. He knew what shape he wanted it to be. He knew everything that he wanted within that clay. And as long as he was working with that clay, Amen. And shaping it, it was taking the shape that the master or the potter wanted for it to take. When the clay, amen, there was a blemish within the clay and that clay was marred in the hand of the potter. And so the potter said, amen, I'll not discard the clay, but I'm going to take the clay, perhaps break it down, amen, perhaps redo construction again. I'll add a bit of water here. I'll add this to it here, but it's still not out of my hands. I haven't given up on it yet. I'm going to still begin to work. I'm still going to continue to work, amen, with that clay until I'm able to fashion it into a vessel, amen, that would be worthy, hallelujah, of the potter's name upon it was marred in the hand of the potter he said so he made it again another vessel he kept his hand upon it amen until the vessel was 
complete. He kept his hand upon it until the vessel. Amen. He just, no, I, I can't stop touching it yet because the vessel is not complete. In just a minute, there's a little spot right here. There's a little spot right here. I've got to touch over here. I've got to touch over here. I've got to, my hands are going to continually be upon it because I'm not done touching it. I'm not done working with it. I just, there's a little bit more. I've got a little bit more detail that I want to put over here. I want to, I want to create this on this. And I, my hands is going to, I've got to continually work with it while the clay is still pliable within my hands. And, and, and uh, Jeremiah watched as the hand of the potter continued to remain upon the clay, amen, until the clay, amen, had been fashioned into a vessel, another vessel, and it seemed good as it seemed like the potter should make it. Potter said, I, I, Jeremiah, I knew before, while it was still a lump, amen, upon the wheel. I already knew what I was going to make out of that life. I already knew what I was going to do, but and, uh, and I've just kept my hand on it and I've still, I've just kept on working with it because I have, I have the end in mind of what I'm going to do with this clay. It'll be this size, it'll be this shape, it'll, it'll be used for this and I know exactly how I'm going to bless it and how I'm going to use it. And then the Lord said, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Behold, as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand. Not, I'm getting ready to touch you, you better hold on because my touch is getting ready to come to you. Uh, you know, it's not a matter of the blessing is coming down the road, but... God said, just the way the potter, whenever he started with the lump of clay and he began to work with it and his hands stayed upon it until it was a finished work, he said, so you are in my hand. And if a potter can be patient with just a lump of dirt, how much more would I be patient with the man that I formed at the So Job, and I'd, I'm getting ready to wrap up. Job said, Have pity upon me, O oh my friends. For the Lord, the hand of God, hath touched me. Job, all you felt was a little bit extra touch from the hand of God. You didn't realize that God's hand never left your life. It stayed upon you to make you a beautiful vessel. It never left you. It's always remained with you. Job said, I'm so broken. I don't see, it doesn't seem like Anything has fallen my way. And God said, Oh, I know that it hurts to move the clay this way or that. But you haven't seen the end of the picture, Job. You haven't got there yet, Job. I'm shaping and molding, amen, this clay. I'm making it into the image that I want it to be made in. Job, there's not been one time in the whole story where my hands were taken off the clay and I left you to yourself. Job, you felt, amen, the touch, and it felt like God, amen, was only touching you for something evil. What you didn't understand was God never takes his hand off the clay until he's done with it. And when he finishes, amen, the clay, amen, will be molded into something great. Oh, hallelujah. Can I tell you today, and as, I, as I'm wrapping this up, amen, the hand of 
God. Amen. Didn't just touch you one time. Amen. Somewhere. Amen. Way back in your existence. Amen. But the reason that you're here is because, amen, the hand of God is still working with you. And God still, amen, has a plan for your life. Amen. And uh, it just takes, uh, amen, the working of the hand of God. Who knows exactly what all God will do within your life and who knows what God will do within my life. I sure don't. I just know as long as I'm living that the hand of God is still working. Oh, I... He's probably done with the physical man, except I'll start losing my hair more and, and I won't be able to lift as much weight and you know. But the spiritual man continues to grow. And God says there's still some things that I'm working with. Job, I want you to know that. I'll not have pity on you. I'm going to be jealous of you. Because the hand of God is touching you. And as long as God's hand is upon you, the end result is going to be beautiful. And, uh, and I don't know where you're at today in your walk with God, but just feel like the Lord, amen, is wanting to tell you, it's not a time for pity. My hand is upon you. There's a world that wishes to be where you're at. There's a world that wishes that they could feel the touch that you are feeling. Oh, it may seem like things are going bad, but you haven't got to the end of your story yet. It's not finished yet. God, God still has a, has a plan that's bigger than you, that's greater than you. And God wants you to know today His hand is touching you. Hallelujah. Let's stand together this morning. I love you, Master. I have found the best place and I'm I'm wrapping it up and I'm done. But I have found the best place for me to feel the hand of God is at an altar. When I begin to pray, as I begin to kneel before Him or as I stand before the Lord, I feel His hand ever closer. I'm going to give us a time today for just a few minutes before we finish off and start our next service. I'm going to give us an opportunity, amen, to come and find a place where the Master can touch you once more. Where the Master, amen, can shape you today. And you can feel the hand of God. If you can't come and kneel, if you can find a place to sit, somehow today, if you'll allow the Master, if you'll talk with the Master, I feel like the Lord has spoken to me to speak to you today and let you know He wants to touch you and He loves you. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord if you feel a need to pray. Amen. Why don't you come, amen, to this altar? If you feel a need to talk to the Lord, these altars are open. Oh, Lord, I come withholding nothing. I have but one desire. All I have is on the altar. I pray, Lord, send the fire. Lord Jesus, I need your hand. Hallelujah. Is anybody that would like to let the masters touch, touch you today?